All right, so I've used the layer styles in Photoshop on my vector line work, or not my line work, my vector uh, type. And I've, I've added quite a few. I've added an inner shadow, an inner glow, a satin, which is just a gradient overlay kind of preset, a color overlay and a gradient overlay. And any one of those turned off makes a change that I am thinking is for the worse, right? And so it's always good to kind of check that with your illustration. Let me give this a little bit more space. That you're happy with each of those decisions. This is the only one I might dial down a little bit. So not only can you turn the effects on and off, you can also double click on them and you can adjust their individual opacity. So I'm gonna take that inner glow down to only about 13% opacity. And I think that helps. Okay, now the last thing, notice how my coloring looks very um, scattered and messy. There's not a whole lot of places, even in the black of the eye where it's just flat, full bleed color. So in my text, for the most part, it isn't either, but I think I wanna add a dissolve filter. And so I've worked with a lot of you on this whenever we do flats, this might be for a background as well. For this, I'm going to make a duplicate of that text, right? And then I'm going to right click on that layer and I'm going to say rasterize the layer style. Not only does this rasterize my vector type, which is why I do it on a duplicate, but it also rasterizes all of those coloring effects. Right, all in the same place. The reason I do that is because now I am going to change its layer mode from normal to dissolve. And I am going to take the opacity down and it will look like that, right? But the problem is because I have the exact same colors underneath it, you can barely tell. So I'm also going to add a gradient overlay to my dissolve. And this one I'll just make more straightforward. Like I actually don't want it to have a color, I don't think. I think I just want it to be a straight black and white gradient overlay. This could work. I can reverse it. I can customize it. I can do a lot of things. If you hit delete, you can get rid of stops. You can add new ones. You can always edit the color, right? And I'm gonna set it to multiply. There we go. All right, so now you can see I have that slight what's called a dissolve texture. It's a sand pattern kind of breakup of the pixels over the entirety of the type. And that's gonna help it print without looking kind of digital. You know, it's gonna make it finally look like it's letterpress because that's what I'm going for. All right, so that is my coloring solution. And I think I'm gonna save it just as a JPEG like this. You can choose how you show your black and white type and, and, your, and your color type, but I'm gonna to choose to save my color type like this with the spot illustration on it on just a white background. So there's four things we're gonna be submitting for this assignment eight. Our sketch, which is our text blocking, our black, <laughs> 
you know, tight without any layer styles on it, just as a JPEG on a white background, are color type. And you can do your color type just out on its own on a white background, like you did your black type, but I'm choosing to do it with my illustration because I think that looks better. I'm having to save it at quite a low JPEG to get under five megabytes. And then the final thing you're gonna submit is your finished poster. So what do I need to add to this to make it a poster? I need to add a background and a border, right? So, so far I've designed everything to look good on white, black, and gray. But just like um, I added an offset to my spot illustration to work on different backgrounds, I might decide to work on the outside of the type to work on a, a colored background. So now I'm going to duplicate my type again. And this time I'm going to rasterize the layer style again. And the difference is that now I have rasterized it with the dissolve built into it. So it's all there which allows me to double click on that and add any kind of stroke I want. I'm just gonna do a simple white offset, set to normal, just so you can see. And then I can simply move that layer behind my other layers. And I only have it at 21%, or I only have it at 21 as a size, rather. I only have it at 57% opacity, which is why it looks kind of dull. Let's push it up all the way. That's too strong. So I'm going to push it down to maybe 77, something like that. All right. So that helps a little bit. Check this out. Check, check, check it out. I can duplicate that then, right? And then I can rasterize that layer style, which has the white stroke around it. And I can double click and I can add another stroke around that that is a different color, like maybe the purple or this darker tone. Maybe the blue that's around the bird. That's a nice one. And I can make that larger. And so now I have a double stroke. There's just basically no end to how you can play on the outside of your vector, right? In your coloring. In fact, I could keep doing that and doing it and doing it and create lines that fill up the entire background, echoing from my type and be kind of a psychedelic poster. But I think it's it's getting a little too too far away from the simplicity of some of my inspirations. So I'm just gonna change this to kind of a brown. Keep it down to earth. And then I'm going to set it to dissolve. Again, so it's kind of a broken up edge, even though it's all stemming still from my vector. Right. And then that shows me that I want to move that behind. Let's see, where's the one? Yeah, I can take this out. Yeah, so I'm liking this. It's pretty strong. The trouble with using the dissolve is you kind of have to see it up close to actually see what it looks like. So I'm going to take this one way down because I want that slight lightening, but 
not as strong as it was looking. Or maybe I don't. Okay. So now I can put in a background. If it works well on black, white, and gray, you are ready for your background. Trying to think if there's anything I want to change about it. And yes, there is one thing. So if you remember in compositing, we did dodging and burning. And we were putting our creatures into different landscapes. But there are a lot of those different effects we do sometimes. Yeah, that helps. Um, what I can do is on these rasterized type layers, even this one, it's only 16%. I can hit them a little bit with dodge and burn to give it that variety. So I'm going to use the burn tool. As long as it's rasterized, you can do this. I'm going to go to the midtones and take an exposure that's just under 30. A large, soft brush. Very large. I'm just going to hit it in a few areas. And then I can get more variation by playing up the opacity of it. There we go. And I can burn the highlights as well. If there's places that just feel too, um, too hot, too bright. Okay, now I need a background. So I'm gonna go right on top of my gray layer. I'm gonna save my work and I'm gonna go to Chrome because I want to find a texture overlay. Remember we did those for our creaturescapes and for our landscapes. And I want a letterpress, just doing a Google search, Basically, it's kind of a grungy poster texture overlay. Might be too specific, but let's see what it gives us. And then do go to images. Yeah, I want that kind of gritty texture. You know, like all this kind of stuff. Here we go. This one has promise. I don't want it to have words in it. And ideally, I want it to be pretty large. This is a high resolution image. But textures don't need to always be at full resolution to be effective. So let's do, let's see, four me megapixels or bigger. This is a nice one. Remember, designers are, are gracious. You know, they, they offer up a lot. And I just don't want a flat color background. I want something that looks like a letterpress poster. And of course, I could scan my own paper and use that. Because these are just raster assets. So I'm going to open that image in a new tab. Then I'm going to open this image in a new tab. And that's a pretty good resolution. I can use that. And that's, that's a decent resolution. I can use that. So if I layer those two and then play with the color, I think I can get the background I want. So what do I do? I bring them in. I'm going to bring in the, the more straightforward color one on top of my gray background. Comes in as a smart layer. I'm going to stretch it all the way to the edges. Then I'm going to bring in the other one, same thing. I like that this one's vignetted a little bit. You see how it's darker at the edges than it is at the middle. 
which is perfect for a texture overlay, because then I can just set it to 